Hello everyone, Scott here. I hope you are all well and healthy and safe. I want to talk to you today about the topic of fear, but more specifically, how life is when you don't live in fear, when you just don't get involved in all this. And I suppose the fear comes from what's happening, the uncertainty, and it's fueled by social media, and it's definitely fueled by the mainstream media. I don't think anyone would argue with that. But we've lots of stuff to be legitimately fearful about. We've got our own health. What if we catch corona? And what if we walked within a metre of someone and they had corona? And how's that going to affect us? What if someone we care about or the wider community gets corona? The whole economy and the dot jobs and people's debts, a big worry. Do we have a job now? Do we have a job to go back to? How's the future going to look? The police, are we going to get stopped by the police for walking my dog? Lots of scare stories out there about the police finding people and stopping them going from A to B and why are you out? And that's terrifying for some people. There's lots of conspiracy theories to be scared of as well because of the big thing. Is this 5G causing this? Why are we doing this? Is it New World Order, the Illuminati? That isn't the purpose of this video, but we have lots of things to be fearful. But, um, and people are legitimately scared, and I don't think MD would argue, there's lots of fear there, and people are worried about the uncertainty. So, what happens when we live in fear? How is this affecting us? And then we'll move on to... What happens if we don't have any of this? What happens if we have a pretty cool life? And actually, this period in time is is actually, we'll look back in this fondly rather than being shit scared, which a lot of people are. So, what happens when we live in fear? Well, the first thing is our immune system. Stress, the fight or flight response, activates a sympathetic nervous system, floods our body with adrenaline and loads of other chemicals. It fucks us up massively. Living in stress for any long periods of time does have an effect on your physical body. It weakens your immune system, not to mention your mental health. We don't need to talk about mental health because we know people struggle with that in normal times and this exacerbates it. So that's fundamentally a problem but it weakens our immune system and then we become unhealthy and a lot un more unhealthy than we would be without all of this. And if we have underlying health concerns, it makes it worse. The next big thing that happens is we psychologically, and you can check this, we, we lose empathy for people. We go into survival mode and that's why you're seeing so many assholes online these days are jumping on and criticising and they need to be right because being right and justifying their views, it makes them feel in control. And if you look at those people that are like that ram assholes, and again, I did because there's so many horrible people online, but when we change that to look at people to they're doing it out of fear and weakness to a certain degree, we look at that and we respond different to that. So people lose empathy and they lose the willingness to work as a big cohesive family because they're so concentrated in themselves out of fear. The next thing is we kind of lose our ability to be creative and think and problem solve because of the way we react and the way the brain acts and the chemicals we get. We just don't have that creative thinking. And we need that to get out of this. We need that to change our minds to what the new world is going to be because it's fundamentally different to how it was at the start of the year. The next thing is we have a strong reliance on others and people making it better and others solving problems for us. And we see that if we take away our locus of control and we give it to other people, they want to sit tune in at five o'clock to see how the government's going to fix this and the government's going to give me money. My business will be bailed out by the government and we want money. That whole thing of someone else will fix this for us and we will be told everything we need to do and maybe we're told to go out two hours a day. We, we look for answers in other people rather than looking inside for the answers and we can see that massively. People are just relying on the government and everything being done for them around, taking a little bit of control. And that's understandable because this is fear. It doesn't make them bad people. It's how people fundamentally react when they are stressed. And the last thing is we just stop questioning. Um, we don't question what's happening. No, very, very few people are looking. They're looking at certain things um, and their time's too caught up looking on social media and worrying and being fearful. We don't actually question what's happening in the bigger, wider world and what other stuff might be happening under the radar for all this. And again, not conspiracy theories, but they tend to shut down self-preservation mode. And we don't actually question these things. We look to point number four for other people to tell us what to do. The experts, the smart people, the government there to point us in the right direction. And we don't, we, we lose that ability to think for ourselves as much as we would without the fear. So what happens if we don't have this? What happens if we take the decision to 
forget about all this. And actually say, you know what, I'm going to control this and I'm not going to be fearful of all this. And I'm going to maybe take what's said in the media with a pinch of salt and statistics and all these. Somebody mentioned uh, yesterday, we are now statisticians, we are experts in statistics. Because we can see death rates from this and compared to the, fl the normal flu, we know what happened 20 years ago or 100 years ago. We're all statisticians and we worry about that. So what happens if we ignore all this and just try to be the best versions of ourselves and not be scared? Well, we definitely get better health and that goes back to the very first point of the weakened immune system we have better mental health and we definitely have better physical health we start thinking more creative and coming up with ideas and if our business is under pressure we solve that we come up with new ideas we pivot uh, and we're much more able to do that if we are not living in fear so become creative problem solvers we solve our own problems or find the people that can solve our problems and bring them in we just become nicer. So point number three, we just become nicer and better people because if, if we're reacting out of fear and self-preservation, we can't possibly be the best versions of ourselves because it's survival mode. But without any fear, we can do it. Well, I suppose billionaires and millionaires being philanthropic and giving money back, they can be nice because they don't have fears about money and paying the bills. Those fears aren't there, which is why when people rise up, they tend to give stuff back. So we can really help our community and be better people during these times. If we don't have fears and concerns about survival, about getting food, about getting toilet rolls, about the media, are we going to die? Is everybody around us going to die? How long are we in this for? When we don't have those concerns, we can focus our time and energy in giving something back and helping people and at least just be nice to people, which I think is massively important. And, and point number four um, is actually, we, we can now look at the bigger picture of this. Now, while everybody is bickering and arguing and telling you how smart and clever they are and how they're now infectious disease experts and the experts aren't experts and are telling the political leaders how to run the country despite not having any political experience in any way, shape or form, apart from having an opinion. While all that's going on, nobody, for example, is looking at the Corona Act 2020 that's gone through um, because they're too worried about watching the news, listening to social media, all these things. And things like the Corona Act slip under the radar, which is one of the biggest stripping of our fundamental rights uh, in a generation, it's been told. So Google Corona Act 2020. Have a look at just what's in there and how many of your freedoms that you take advantage, you take for granted are being stripped away. And then Google uh, Corona 2020, uh, freedom of rights been taken away, freedom's been taken away. And see the analysis of it because it's a massive big act. And that's one thing that is happening here. Um, there's so many things in that act. And nobody should be online bickering with other people. Everyone should be looking at that act and making a collective decision and thinking, actually, do I... Am I happy that the government can do all these things? I won't go into it because that's not the purpose of the video. But the big thing here that people should be talking about has been totally ignored. The, the, the stripping away of your rights is the thing that people should really be keeping an eye on. And I suspect 99% of people haven't looked at this act that's gone through and 99.9% aren't aware this massive act has gone through Parliament at the moment. It's one example, it's not the purpose of this video. So when we don't live in fear, we can start looking at things and we think, oh, do I want all my human rights stripped away? As an example, am I happy with what's happening? We can take the time to ex examine what's happening and we can ask questions as to whether that's right. But when we live in fear, it's about survival and Things are, tight, are massively different. So some tips, some nice and easy tips. And again, I'd love your thoughts and tips. Let's share as a community. Um, limit your social media. Probably includes watching my videos as well. Uh, but limit social media. Again, it, it, I think it's going to have a fundamental negative effect on people's health. Yes, we need it to keep in contact with people because we're in the house. We're grounded. We're not allowed out. So we need it. And I need it for business. But... Spending a lot of time on it is detrimental to your health and it creates fear. So if you're on social media, change who you hang about with and only hang about with positive, cool people. Um, Realise that this is kind of all made up. I'm not saying corona doesn't exist, that's not what I meant, but all the fear 
is made up. Um, it's created from an environment of everyone. It's a collective, but if you choose not to be part of that fear, if you choose not to live in fear, then it's kind of all made up. Again, whether corona is or isn't bad, that's not my point, or whether people are dying and it's the same as the flu, not my point of this video. Don't want involved in that debate. It doesn't matter because things are what they are. So whether corona is made up, it's a conspiracy, it's 5G, things are what they are at the moment and we shouldn't be fearful because if we are, we can't change it, we cannot change the things that are happening while living in a state of fear. So by realising it's kind of all self-created and it's created in our brain and fear doesn't exist out with like a tree or something, we can start to police our thoughts and eradicate ourselves from the thoughts and that isn't as easy as just saying it takes a little bit of work. Um, do something nice for people is point number three here. So when we're living in a state of fear, we're looking inwards, we are, you know, survival mode. When we start genuinely doing nice things for people, not virtue signaling online and saying, you know, I'm we offer free accommodation, we help old people, we do lots of stuff, but you see a lot of stuff online, it's virtual signaling, saying, look at how good I am giving back. Um, that's still coming from a state of fear and needing appreciation. People can, people are doing genuinely lovely things and be one of those people giving back, doing nice things, that will make you be less fearful because it's going to make you feel good and the more we feel good, the less fearful we're going to feel. And point number four, uh, we can't do it personally and go to networking, but get some Zoom calls, get some communications, get some um, groups and some video calls with really, really successful people, high level thinkers. So if you've seen my stories over the last few days, you'll see me speaking to, I try to get on Zoom calls with billionaires. And some of these calls, they're like, why is this little guy from Scotland here? He's not a billionaire. He's not a venture capitalist. He isn't in the, the global elite. Why is this guy weaseled his way into my Zoom call? Because I can tell you, when you think like a millionaire, that's you're still living in fear in this current age because being a millionaire isn't that big a deal these days. But when you think like a billionaire, so I try to get myself in the networks of billionaires because the the thinking is massively different i can guarantee it high level thinkers experts not experts about statistics or corona but business people thought leaders um get in these people's networks get on zoom calls or you know watch their webinars i guarantee you it is different if you take mainstream media social media facebook or twitter all these things are here there's other layers above this and the thinking is totally different. And if you can get on these Zoom calls with these high level thinkers in whatever industry you are in, I guarantee it's going to elevate your mood because billionaires aren't living in fear about all this. They're looking at opportunities. And again, not saying it's opportunistic, but in these market crashes, people with money that don't have the concerns about money and have reserves, look at these as opportunities. And there's many, many business quotes that tell you that. So surround yourself. Don't surround yourselves with the experts in social media that are now politicians and, you know, infectious disease experts. I saw an accountant arguing with a professor the other week, last week. And a, an accountant is arguing with an infectious disease professor who had a PhD in infectious diseases in Scotland. And he taught it for 19 years. He was a professor. And an accountant was arguing with them. When you start getting involved in this kind of daft stuff, it's low-level thinking. So get in with the high-level thinkers. For me, it's the business leaders, it's the billionaires. I weasel my way into every Zoom call that I can um, just to be part of it and listen to what they've got to say. And my notepad is full of different ideas. You don't hear all the, all the noise, let's say noise, of mainstream media, news, newspapers and social media are here. Uh, and that's like 99% of the communications there's a layer above that and never in these calls does anyone touch on the same stuff that the, the, the low level thinkers think about because that's living in fear and anger and mistrust and uncertainty. The people at the top, and again, they're in a privileged position, um, they think totally different. And I'm going to end this by saying, yeah, it isn't just, oh, it's okay for Scott because I, I am self-isolating at this is my office. I am living out of my office permanently um, to salvage my business, to make all my 14 staff are away home, working from home, some are, some are various states of, of furloughed. My job's here to salvage my business, so I am literally living in my office. I'm not in a privileged position like these high level thinkers. I am here doing everything I can to make sure my business survives and thrives 
at the end of it. So I'm certainly not sitting here from some privileged position with loads of cash reserves and thinking this doesn't affect me. We're in the holiday home industry. This affects me as much as it does pubs and restaurants and all these other things. Um, our, one of our sources of income has literally been eradicated and is now illegal to do it. So I sit here from, in the first week, I was in a position of fear. That's why I'm saying this, it's so empowering when you don't live like that because I was listening to the media, I was listening to social media, oh my God, the world's gonna end, my business is gonna fail, I'm a failure. And as soon as I stepped that level up and thought, you know what, I'm not subscribing to this whole consciousness that's out there, you know, life just gets better and life gets happier. So. I am remaining positive, but that isn't because I'm in a privileged position, it's simply a mindset thing. So I hope this video has helped someone, if there is someone that is fearful, uncertain, and it is affecting their mental health, their physical health, or their chances of thriving in this, then please share the video. I'd love any comments. There's my random tips on how to make it better. Um, please give me any other tips you guys have of getting out of the fear mindset and living in the strength and control mindset. So stay safe, have a great day and I really appreciate your comments below because I don't know if anybody even watches these videos. So please comment and let me know your thoughts and advice so that the community can share them. Cheers.